Eric. Testing.
give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. That old time religion will make you love people you don't even like. Right. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Isn't God good? All the time. Glory to God. You may be seated for just a moment. We're going to do a few announcements, get that out of the way. We've got some stuff coming up. And uh, yeah, she's singing a solo. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, the inner ears worked for the first chord. That was awesome. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we're still trying to conquer things around here. Inner ears is one of them, so we can get a little better sound going on. But uh, we practiced with them a while ago, but she has a problem with them anyway. <laughs> Me and Rebecca are going, we like it because we can't hear anything when we stuff something in our ear. <laughs> you know, glory to God. But uh, got a great time, going to have a great time tonight. Amen. Uh, happy to have Brother and Sister Ernst with us. I called him last week and asked him to preach for us. He said, most definitely, and so I was happy to have him with us. I, I, I watched him last week, and I watched part of him this week when he was preaching, and I thought, man, this guy needs to be behind my pulpit and preach a little bit. Amen. And uh, so we're going to let him loose tonight here in just a short while. Amen. But uh, we've got a few announcements going on. Uh, mainly, uh, my wife has announcements about ladies' retreat and stuff. You want to go with yeah. that? Okay, hit it. Uh, so ladies' retreat is October 8th and 9th. Again, ladies, we do need to have a meeting and discuss um, where we would like to stay, um, who all's going, and hopefully that's everybody, and um, some fundraisers that we need to get on the ball and get done. Um, and then also praise and worship practices will not be, guys, are you hearing me now? Not be Wednesday night, Stephanie. It will be Thursday night at 4.30 before Bible study. John, that's Thursday night. Yeah. He's our, he's our resident uh, musician expert, I think. Is that what we call him? Yeah. He doesn't know what a stanza is or a chord, but he's our expert or that tells us. Or a trouble clef or any of that stuff. Of course, half that stuff I just mentioned, I don't know what it is. So I'm a bass player. My wife asked me, where you at? I'm right there. <laughs> yep, that's where it's at. I have no idea. All right. Um, we have some good news about our camp. Go ahead. I'm excited. We are $385 over sending our kids to camp. We have three boys going. Yeah. 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 Praise God. So that means we got money for their snacks. We got money for the paintball. Uh, we got money for gas to get there and back and all that going on. So we got uh, these two boys here and that boy over there all going to be going to camp. Yay! And we believe that God is going to move. Amen? Amen? You're never too young for God to move in your life. Amen. And you're never too old either. Amen? Amen? Speaking of which, I'm happy to have my father-in-law back with us tonight. He preached over at Airport Assembly this morning. <laughs> Notice I faded right into that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, we asked him how, how his service was. He said, really good. I asked him if he got saved. He said, no, why should I? 
So I, I, feel, I, I told him, he said, you didn't have a comeback on that. I said, well, you'd just be like the rest of us then. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, I was happy to have him back with us. And I think this is actually his last Sunday here for about a month. He's going to be going back to Oklahoma and Arkansas and Tennessee and Colorado and lots of different states. So Wyoming. he's going to, Wyoming. Wyoming, yeah. Yeah, I got a big stop at Wyoming, and uh, and so a uh, small stop in Arkansas. Uh, maybe just, <laughs> maybe it's a drive-by and a wave. Hey, sis, you know. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, you never know. But uh, he might just skip that state all to, all to pieces. Huh? Glory to God. And brother and sister Ernst saying, what is going on with this church? We're in a good mood tonight. <laughs> this is Pentecost Sunday, man. And uh, I preached this morning. Are you Pentecost by denomination or by salvation? And uh, we determine we're going to be Pentecost by salvation. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So I had a good time this morning. Uh, a few announcements I got real quick. This Saturday is the youth rally at uh, Riverbank. Uh, there we go. Another, another solo going on there. Uh, that's at Riverbank at 6000 Terminal, Brother Louts Church. And so looking forward to that. Uh, come and be with us. Come out and, uh, you know, we got these three young boys and all these other little ones that are still in the youth department. Yeah. So we need to go out and encourage them. And, and as they grow, they'll get more youth to come in. We've got Andrew over here. He's in the, he's in the youth, part of the youth department. Yeah. Uh, i got to say I'm proud of Andrew. I, man, I see, him, I see changes happening in his life, and I'm proud of him. Yeah. He's doing good. Anyway, uh, with that all being said, we got that going on. And then, of course, we got our Bible study Thursday night at 6 o'clock. And then we have church here next Sunday as well at 1030 and 5 o'clock. I'm getting there. No, I'm excited. getting there. I know. I know. She's excited. When you have an IT person, you just want to shoot them. But they're so necessary in a church anymore. Uh, we have June 5th. We have... Uh, men's meeting at uh at at riverbank it's a sectional men's meeting so we have all the different churches from the section coming it's going to start at 10 a.m uh there at riverbank and uh, pastor rick his assistant pastor is going to be speaking for us it's at 10 a.m because he has to work of a morning pastor rick does on saturday morning so he'll be there uh, to be able to speak on at 10 a.m so that's june 5th at his place that's a breakfast and a meeting so come out and be with us let's have breakfast and have the word of god amen Glory to God. I know my father-in-law isn't going to be here or he would be joining us, but I know, I know he'll think about us for a second. Anyway, he'll think while he's eating his breakfast about two hours ahead of us thinking, hey, those guys will be eating breakfast shortly. Anyway, but, uh, but yeah, we're going to be having a men's meeting over there at Riverbank. And then the uh, 18th of June, uh, the Friday before Father's Day, we're going to be having a Friday night service here. And... Uh, we got the wrong one up there. Switch it there. Uh, he's got the revival. Um, that's next. But the 18th of June, uh, uh, Bishop uh, Chad Buttry will be here with us, and he's going to be preaching for us that night. So I, I'm sorry it takes me a minute to catch his name because I've been used to saying Bishop Culver for so long. Yeah. So, uh, But Bishop Buttry is going to be here, and we're looking forward to that, man. That, I think it's going to be a blessing. Amen. Come early because you're going to need, need to to get a seat. Amen? Amen? Oh, and by the way, Saturday night is at 5 o'clock. I gotta announce yes. that. I didn't think because we all think seven, but it's at five o'clock because he's got. They're gonna have pizza afterwards, and they're gonna have games for the kids during the service. He's actually gonna do some giveaways during the service, which is gonna be great. Great, keep the kids' attention. Amen. Amen. And so uh, come out and be with us there. But anyway, we got. Uh, yeah, we have our uh, Friday night service, and then we're going to be going into revival in August, and that is August twelfth through the fifteenth with Brother Kurt Walker. And looking forward to a great time. And uh, that Friday night, which is the 13th, which is Friday the 13th. That's good, huh? I'm not superstitious. I know God can keep me. But Friday the 13th will be our Friday night service we're going to have for that month. And so all churches are invited. Brothers to Ernst, you're invited to come. Uh, you're more than welcome here. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, and so uh, we're going to be having having that. And then, of course, he's going to be here for Sunday morning, Sunday night with us. We'll have five services with Brother Kurt Walker. If the Lord decides to, we'll go on for another few services or whatever. I'm sure I can twist his arm a little bit. I know the following weekend he's going to be going to Africa. Yeah, as he's going to Africa. He's going to scare those poor people <laughs> to death. But anyway, he'll preach the word, so he's going to Africa, but he'll be with us that weekend before. So let's, I know it's a lot of announcements, and I know we've got to run up here, but I want to make sure you're all aware of it so nobody can say I missed something. Amen? God is good. Amen? And there is no, God don't change. 
He does not change. So the same thing they had on the day of Pentecost, we can have today. Amen. We're the ones that's got to make up our minds that we want that. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So at this time, we're going to get back into prayer. Well, I'm going to receive the offering first. We're going to receive our tithe and offering. We'll be taking two offerings. We're receiving two offerings tonight. First will be our tithe and offering so, and, our, and our missions. If you didn't get to give your missions to this morning, but you came tonight with it, then let's give that. And then the second, second offering we're going to be receiving for our speaker tonight. And uh, I, I always like to bless our speaker that comes and, and speaks for us. Come on, Brother John, if you would. And I'm going to open this service in prayer and pray over this offering real quick. And we're going to get into praise and worship and let God have his way tonight. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We praise you for this opportunity to give back to you what you've given us, Lord. And Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, just to multiply it, bless it, encourage those that give, Lord. Those that don't, Lord, let them understand they can give. And Lord, bless them, Lord, that they can give. Heavenly Father, just bless this offering for its intended use. Bless this service, minister, move throughout this service. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. amen. As he receives that offering, it's over there. Or do you? Elsa has it. Elsa has it. Elsa has it, Brother John. Yeah. Our offering travels around here. The grandkids get it and take off. One Sunday they forgot to give it. I think they was thinking about pocketing it, but we got them straightened out on that. So uh, anyway, if everybody would stand with us again, and we're going to get into praise and worship, my lovely wife is going to lead us into praise and worship, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll get it better together tonight than we did this morning on that one song, but that's okay. God was glorified. Amen? Amen. So let's get into worship this morning. There's even. Praise God. Bless you, Lord, when I 
I need some more volume on my microphone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
Let's just not stop praising the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's just never, ever give up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Father, we glorify you. friend 
am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Oh, let's sing it now. I am a friend of God. Oh, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend one more time now. Oh, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He calls us friend today. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you choose. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Isn't it great to have a friend? They say that the word says it sticks closer than any brother. Amen. Hallelujah. And he calls me friend. I met a lot of people in my life and a lot of people that I like having friendship with, but God's the best one. Amen. All of our kids are going to super church. Around here we have super church at night too. That way they get taught at night the same speed that they're at and we don't have to slow down or they don't have to slow down to learn with us. I guess uh, Sean might leave. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Glory to God. We got him in trouble this morning, but that's a whole other story. Glory to God. Isn't God good? Man, I am just, uh, I'm just excited about what God's doing. I'm just excited. Can you do something with this thing? Every time one of those cameras goes off, it's warning me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, God is just doing so many great things. I tell you what, I see God not only moving in our church, but in our section and in our district and uh, just in lives. And I, I, I see such growth going on in churches. I am praying. I pray every Every morning, every morning that God will just put a new fire in the pastors. Amen. If you can get a new fire in the pastors, you'll get a new fire in the church. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. At this time, I want to, did I just, I keep losing myself or something. Give me some house speakers on here. Turn my monitors down. Give me some house speakers. Uh, I, okay, and I have nothing. Boy, you ask for one little thing and they just turn you right on off, don't they? What's going on here? What's going on? House is all the way up. Is your main house all the way up? Okay. So do we have house now? We had house a minute ago. Oh, is the amp on? Or did it get turned off? Well, that means it's off. Okay, well, turn me back on to monitors. I got monitors that'll die if they'll work for years. Glory to God. Satan, you're a liar, and you ain't going to have any joy in this piece because we just turn these around this way. I don't have to sing. I can just talk. My daughter's singing. She'll have to worry about that when she gets... Here, here we go. What, did somebody unplug something? What? We got a problem with a cord. Look at this. I can dance, too. I can also flag an airplane. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, now, don't kill these poor people. Okay. Brother Ernst, this, this part of being a pastor, you know, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, really? Yeah. Well, I'm rich in bad chords. That's what I'm rich in. Okay, you can probably take the house speakers down because I see John's hair parting. There we go. And you can probably bring the monitors up just a tad bit because Rebecca's going to have to need them when she sings here in just a few minutes. And uh, that, there you go. Okay, okay. And we can work with that and we'll go from there. And if she's up here giving this sign, that means turn the monitors up. That's my son-in-law. <laughs> so the next thing is to throw something. That's the reason they don't put anything that I can throw up here. 
Anyway, glory to God. But we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, remember mom and dad. Dad on the way to church this morning got to feeling bad, so they had to go back home, so they're not here this evening as well. So remember them in prayer. And uh, let's, let's remember Sister Penny. She's still got that headache, so she's at home with a headache. And uh, it's probably getting better now because her husband's here. But anyway, uh, I don't leave anybody <laughs> alone. You know that. So, uh, but let's, let's remember her in prayers. Anybody else have another prayer request? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Well, honestly, I've never had an MRI, but I've always told them if I've heard stories, and I said, if you've got to do that for me, you're going to knock me out because <laughs> I am claustrophobic, <laughs> and I will fight my way out of anything. You know, they always say the worst thing to do when you get in a fight is back a coward into a corner. <laughs> Put me in a tube. This will not work, come out well for anybody. So we pray that I, I never have to have them, but we pray that Sister, or, <laughs> Sister Elsa, that Elsa doesn't, I forget, I never, uh, we pray that she doesn't have to have it either. And we also pray that God heals her. God straightened her legs out already. Amen. And now they're saying she may have junior or juvenile arthritis, and we don't want her to have to grow with that. And they're wrong. And God, God's got it under control. And so we know that we know there's a healing virtue that's going to pass through her body. Amen. Is there anybody else have any prayer requests tonight? Yes, M Maria? Maria. Hey, I got it right. I'm lucky if I remember my own last name, so I'm good. I'm Maria, Brother Mark. Yes. Yes, the CPR certification he needs, he needs it released so that he can go to total work. So it's already been passed. It's just... It's just the slowness of people getting things out. So we're praying that it'll hit there Monday and Tuesday he can go to work. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We need to remember my father-in-law in prayer as he goes on his trip, traveling mercies and safety and an enjoyable time. Amen. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's fun traveling. It's fun getting home, too, sometimes. <laughs> I used to do a lot of traveling last year. I was doing a lot of traveling, or a year before last especially. And, uh, oh, I like traveling. I like seeing the sights. But, boy, when I hit California border and knew that I was within driving distance to get home, my foot got real heavy because I knew where home was. And when home, even though my wife was with me, when I got home, guess what? I got to get out of, a, I got to get out of something that was moving, and I got to set in something that was stationary and belonging to me, me and the bank anyway. But uh, anyway, anybody else got any prayer requests tonight? Yes, Brother Vermillion, Pastor Vermillion, uh, love that man. And uh, he was sick today. That's the reason my father-in-law was over there preaching for him this morning. And so we need to pray that God just touch him and heal him. He's 80, 85, 85 years old, still, still in the pulpit, still pastoring. And, uh, you know, he, he just needs a touch today. Amen? And I believe God can touch him and God can heal him. Becca? Yes, we need to remember, what is their last names? The what? B? Okay, B saw. I thought they said the Esau's, and I was like, huh? I thought I was losing my hearing there for a minute, but I know I probably am, but I thought I could understand. So the B saws, we need to remember them in prayer that God will lead and direct them. Uh, whether, you know, more importantly, we need to pray that God would just save their souls. Amen. You know, we got to think about that first before anything else happens is saving souls. Amen? They can be in the worst shape they're in, but if God can save them, then he can worry about healing them. That's easy. But let's get them saved first. Amen? Glory to God. Is there any other prayer requests? Sister Shannon, she's going to be coming home in a, two, in a couple weeks. She's got her anxieties acting up, and she's going to be coming home from Yucca, Yucca, Arizona. And uh, as the old saying goes, it's a great place to be from far away from there's nothing out there you know there's there's some nice parts of arizona but yucca ain't part of it uh you know that's the reason they call it yucca 
Because honestly, I'll tell you what happened. One of my tribe showed up there first and looked around and went, yuck, uh, and turned around and walked off. And that's how it got its name. It's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Any other prayer requests tonight? Glory to God. Yes, Mark. Yes, yes, and all that gets wrapped up. So anybody, everybody got an unspoken request by uplift a hand? Unsaved loved ones, we, we all got those, amen? I'm going to ask you to stand, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, you know each and every need, Lord. Before we ask, you know them, and as we ask, the answer's on its way. Heavenly Father, I ask you to minister and move in every need right now, Lord, whatever it may be, Lord, whether it's sickness, Lord, whether it's finances, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, Lord, whatever it is, spiritual, Lord Jesus, just move in a mighty way and let your hand move through these things, Lord, that there be healing be in these things, Lord. Lord, not that we get any glory, but you get all the glory, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you just to move in each and every need, Lord Jesus. Just touch them, Lord. Heal them. Deliver, Lord Jesus. And the unspoken requests, Lord, you know what they are, Lord. We don't even have to say them. You know what they are, and you read our hearts, Lord. Heavenly Father, the unsaved loved ones, Lord, we pray for salvation in families today, Lord Jesus. We pray for salvation, Lord Jesus. We pray that you'd send somebody by to say the right thing, that their heart would be drawn to you. Heavenly Father, Lord, and we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for all these answers that are on their way. We give you every, all the glory and all the honor, Lord Jesus. Nothing comes to us, but it all goes to you, Lord. And we ask you, and we come along beside our brothers and sisters, faith believing, Lord, that it shall be done. We give the praise and the glory and the honor today for what's going to happen tomorrow. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. At this time, I'm going to ask Rebecca if she's ready. And she usually says, the better question, is the congregation ready? And we, we all say, amen. And I, I built the sound booth so it takes longer for her to get here. The door attacked her. Okay, now, just let me tell this story. I heard a story the other day that, that her youngest child, Wendy, walking down the little area here, tripped and fell over her own feet. And Eric says, well, she gets it from you. And she says, no, he gets it from you. And I said, hold on. I remember you going, growing up. We used to call her Grace for a reason because she would start upstairs and trip and fall over her own feet. So I'm not sure that the story is really true. The door attacked her or she attacked the door. <laughs> yeah, here you go.
sing in honor and glory and power. Amen. Holiness has a name, and it's Jesus. Victory has a name, and it's Jesus. The word has a name, and it's Jesus. Redemption has a name, and it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Holiness has a name, and it's Jesus. Victory has a name, and it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Word has a name, and it's Jesus. Redemption has a name, and it's Jesus, 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 amen, amen. Blessing and honor and glory and power, amen, amen. Jesus, Heavenly Father, the only name by which you can come to the Father is Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to ask for just four people that has a burning testimony to stand and testify. I'm looking for four people. I got one. I'm looking for four people. I'm looking for three more. Come on. I got two. Come on. I'm looking for two more. I can call you out because I know God's been good to you. Man, I tell you, I'm looking for two more. You mean you guys going to leave me hanging for two more people? There's the one. I'm looking for one more person. Come on. Come on, look at it. You ever notice that when you call for something like that, they all start looking at the ground? So go ahead, Brother John. Amen. Yes, amen. Honey? Yeah. 
Yes, amen. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Brother Mark. Yes, amen. And, you know, like I said this morning, I, I, I know I'm getting in trouble. I can feel it coming on. <laughs> Sister Becky stood. We just couldn't see it. So, Sister Becky, you have a testimony. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. I told you she was standing. You guys just couldn't see it. I, I knew there was a testimony coming up. And like I said, I feel it coming on when I know I'm going to get in trouble. I'll hear about that after service. She'll take her finger and she'll point it at me like this, Brother Ernst. And she does this and she points at me. I think she's trying to be like her mom. She's pretty close to it anyway. Glory to God. With all that being said and done, and I'm going to get out of the way and I'm going to let Brother Ernst come up here and he's going to have his... His liberty. If you're ready, brother, come on up here and I'll give you this mic and I'll let you have after it. These people ain't afraid to say hallelujah or amen or anything else and ain't afraid when you talk to them either. Glory to God. got down there and uh, we actually got a real good offering because see your mom and dad went to the church at that time so we got a gr great offering brother. we got a great offering and how many understands it's good to get something good Amen. hey I've been to churches when we had healings and miracles and and when I you know I even thought yeah you know what I'm saying they're going to give me at least a little bit of money to get me back home. You know what I'm saying? God just poured out his blessings. I mean, everything was good. And the pastor patted me on the back, and, and I thought, well, okay. And how many ever had a rainstorm on the inside and smiling on the outside? Because I didn't have any gas in my car. I knew 20 miles I was going to be pushing that car with my sugar bear. Right there, when she's being nice, sugar bear, but all bear when she's not. I, I knew she was going to be driving, and I was going to be pushing that vehicle. But you know what? A man knocked on my window. He said, God told me to give you five gallons of gas. That's like a million dollars. You ain't got no money. Come on. He won't fail you. He'll meet your every need. He's always on time. He's never been late. I want my sweetheart, the love of my life, the one that has not killed me. 
When I say that, when we first got married, I'll tell you, that woman was funky, cute, you know, like, uh, I mean, I mean, powerhouse. Uh, and she told me to leave her alone, and she was cooking stuff, you know, with a, I had to cut the stuff up with a butcher knife. Uh, and uh, she said, I said, leave me alone. When that knife went back, I said, oh, my Lord, that woman's serious. I took off running. And when it stuck in the floor with me, I said, woman, you're going to hurt me. <laughs> she looked at me and said, I, I was trying to. <laughs> I'm so glad God's got angels that surround us, folks, uh, and keeps us, and he protects us. Somebody say amen to that. <laughs> Sister Pastor, would you? I'm going to add to that story. Oh, come on, baby. It, I had it there for a while. <laughs> we do silly things when we're young. <laughs> He's always calling that on me. But I thank God tonight for being here. Yes. Yes. How many wants God to yell at you? Just ask a preacher. <laughs> so good to see my dear friend, Brother Reynolds. Great man of God, pastor, teacher, evangelist. Held all different kinds of positions in the PYPA. Did so many outstanding things. And I can still remember that long, long, long night. Until we got into that trunk where his keys were. <laughs> but we sure did have church that night, brother. We sure did. Now I'm just going to sing a couple little simple songs that comes from my heart, okay? This comes from my heart. I've come here to worship you, Lord. I don't know why you're here. Come here to worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. I have come here to worship you, Lord. I have come here to glorify your name. I have come here to magnify you, Lord. Let your 
worship you, Lord. Said I've come here to worship you, Lord. You've given me joy. You've given me peace. You've given me blessings that I can't even count. Oh, church, hear me. You've given me love. You've given me mercy. And you have forgiven me of all my sins. I said, I come here to worship you, Lord. I said, I've come here to worship you, Lord. I said, I've come here to worship you. Worship you, Lord. You know what we need? Let your love flow on me. Let your love flow on me. Let your love flow on me, precious Lord. I said, now let your love flow on me. Let your love flow on me. Let your love flow on me, precious Lord. understands that you're going to go through troubles and problems. How many understands that? You can't get around them. I remember one day God asked me if I understood uh, patience and, and I thought in my mind before I answered back to God and, and it says that tribulations work as patience. So guess one prayer I have never prayed. I have never asked for patience. Uh, you know what God said to me? He said if you can't handle the troubles that come your way if you cannot handle the anxieties that are going to happen, if you can't handle and go through those heartbreaks that are going to take place, he said, then you'll never love me like you should love me, and you'll never serve me like you should serve me. you got to be able to handle these things because the world is watching you and how you respond in the midst of that obstacle, in the midst of that trouble, in the midst of all get a hold of what I'm saying. And I said, God, in Jesus' name, I'm going to stand strong. The things that I go through only makes me stronger. The things that I face only draws me closer to you, Lord. And when I'm down, I'm really standing up. I put my trust and I put my faith in.
the things that I go through only makes me stronger. The things that I face only draws me closer to you, Lord. And when I'm down, I'm really standing up for I put my hope and I put my trust in you. Always you. Yes, always you. Now give the Lord a hand. such a privilege to be with you folks tonight. I definitely missing Papa Swain, Mama Swain. I'm missing them. They're very, very special. Love those folks very, very, very much. Had the privilege of pastoring them for a while, and what a blessing it was. And, uh, and over the years, your pastors have come and ministered to us numerous times and it's such a privilege to be here with you tonight i uh can't give you all enough thanks for the good things that he does and i try to figure out these uh you know what i'm saying sometimes these things don't do what you want them to do yeah <laughs> come on brother come on start working right <laughs> amen thank you jesus somebody say amen, amen. When you're looking at it sideways, it's kind of hard. <laughs> and I, I, I know the, God's got humor, but I, won't, I, I just don't like him when he does it to me. <laughs> and the kids are going to have a great time at camp, I'll tell you that. The, through the years, I've been so greatly blessed. I, I, went one, I went to the small children. We took care of those kids up there. One year, they, it was all about Hawaii. It was all about worship Jesus in Hawaii style. And Brother Thomas is with the Lord now. Okay. Him and I were counselors up there. And I'm telling you, he had one of these things that had like a million volts. And, you know, because he's a police officer, that thing shot, arced out there. And those kids looked at him and said, you mean not bother you, son? And uh, <laughs> we, yeah, I'm telling you. But they said to us, but we do the hula for them. So we got coconuts. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys understand that. Yeah. And we got hula skirts on. And I mean to tell you, those kids were laughing. And they were having a ball. But I want you to know those same kids that we were taking care of, that we were praying for. The Holy Spirit came down yeah. out of fire, out of glory. They got saved. They got filled with the Holy Spirit, the, the glory of God. There's a period in my life where I went through 10 solid years I couldn't even go to a meeting. And one day I went back and I didn't know anybody. And if I didn't know them, they sure didn't know me. So I just started saying, shaking hands and saying, hey, I'm Pastor Bob Ernst. And who are you? And one of these guys was about this tall, man. And I said, hi, I'm Pastor Bob Ernst. He said, you don't remember me. I was just a junior, but what you did touched my heart. And I am serving God today. I am living for Him. Your lives are going to do around people. Makes a difference. Don't you ever underestimate what God can do through you. This morning I shared with my church. I, I told my wife, because sometimes when I was out... Uh, on a revival style of preaching and things of that nature. Sometimes God just gave me the same message over and over and over. You know, you can be really good at preaching something that you go over and over and over and over. Somebody say, that's like being a song leader, right? <laughs> you can get good at it. My wife looked at me and said, Surely you're not going to preach that message again tonight. She said, In fact, if you'll sit down, I think I can preach it for you. And there's weird things that can happen to you when you're out on the ministry like that. Uh, two of us showed up for the same service. <laughs> and the pastor said, the good news is I invited you first. <laughs> and then I had a pastor who, my Lord, I, I tell you, that makes me laugh. A guy got anointed, and he was not supposed to speak. And the fire God hid him. And the pastor looked at me and said, What do you want to do? I said, The good news, I'm getting you off, and he's doing the preaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I didn't do anything, and, and God blessed me. <laughs> His blessings are awesome. Now, I know that we're living in troubled times in the troubled world. I know that. But I shared something this morning uh, that uh, God impressed me to look at. So I did. I looked at it. And it simply says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 1, I just want to share this with you. God's law, word, precepts, his covenants show the good things God has for us. God has for us has good things in the shadow of good things it's in the shadow of good things that law is in the shadow of good things to come say god's a word his law is in the shadow of good things to come hebrews chapter 10 verse number one that says the law the shadow of good things the shadow of good things to come so i don't know what you're going through but i heard you say i believe that we can build this church without going nobody in. That's right, amen. amen. I believe that because you are in the shadow of good things oh, yes. to come. Oh, yes. We're in the process of remodeling oh, yes. the Father House. And, and believe me, if I had a group of people like this on a Sunday morning or any time right now, I'd feel like I died and went to heaven. But I want you to know in the midst of the fact that there's really not anybody coming, I guess what? God's been providing the money yeah. that takes care of all yeah. the bills. Yeah. My God is a mighty warrior yeah. on earth. Yeah. Nothing is impossible with God, yeah. but you got to keep your eyes on God. Yeah. I told my wife, when you ask people and thank people for what they're doing, I said, never beg for money. That's right. That's right. Never do. So I want to thank you for that offering. That offering is going to go in on that remodeling that we're doing. Because when it's done, it's going to be paid for not owing anybody yes. anything. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I get so excited about this. So get, grab a hold of this because in the shadow of good things to come, you, sister, are in the shadow of Brother, you are in the shadow of something. Yes, amen. Church, you're in the shadow yeah. of something great. Yeah. That lovely yeah. lady back there. He's so lucky. Who are you back there? Got in the mirror here. No. Okay. <laughs> you're in the shadow of something really good. Okay. Come on. Yes, and brother, you back there. Oh, yes, sister. You're in the shadow of something good. All of you are in the shadow of something good. Now. I was looking at, and I thought about this, and but I wanted to share with you that you guys are in the shadow of something good, something great, something wonderful. And um, but we're living in troubled times. How many how many understands we're living in troubled times? Yes. Therefore, don't ever take your eyes off God. That's right. Don't depend on your job. Don't depend on your money. You Come depend on, on God. That's right. Keep your eyes on God. Keep them on God. My wife often says to me, what are we going to do? And I looked at her and said, well, I'm standing on God's word, and I got my eyes on God. Everything's going to be all right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Do you understand God is the one that opened up the Red Sea? Come on. When it looks like an impossibility, Come we're on. in troubled times. Yeah. But I want you to know God provided a miracle. Yeah. God had given them yeah. money and jewelry and everything that they would have need for a 40-year journey. You don't thank God. That caught him off guard. Come on. Come on. God knows the beginning from the end yes, and the yes. end from the beginning. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Preach it, brother. Now, we may be living in a troubled world, and we are surrounded by confusion, deception. We are surrounded by untruth, immorality. But that does not mean that we don't stand strong because the darker it is, the brighter you're going to shine. Because the darker it is, the brighter you're going to shine. I don't know why this is coming to me, but it does come to me because I lived in darkness for a great period of my life and could not uh, see the truth. Uh, and I stepped into a service uh, and I saw the power of God uh, and I wanted to run out of that place and get out of there. And a little man hunched over came and got me and I ran to the altar. I got saved. After I get saved, I, 
I saw a perfect 360 degree circle. It was pitch black. Uh, said there on that altar, I spoke these words out loud. I said, God, was I in that darkness? Is that why I cannot see the truth? If you cannot see the truth, you better start looking for the light. Yeah. You better start looking for the way out of that darkness. Yeah. I wasn't looking for a way out. If somebody was praying that God would bring me out, you would be the one that would pray that people can come out of that darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. In 14 and 1. St. John 14 and 1. I like this. It's, it uses the word let. Say it with me, let. 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 I didn't hear you. Let. let. I sure didn't hear you. Did you? Let. Oh, I heard that. Sorry. <laughs> Say let. Say let. 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 Yeah. Oh, amen. <laughs> I love that, man. Let. It's a powerful word. And then it has not. Not. And I ain't talking about tying knots either, folks. Come on. The other day I needed to try a trucker's, trucker's knot. It had been years since I tied a trucker's knot. I was working with that silly thing. I said, dog, my mind ain't working too good today. Would you please intervene? I need to tie this knot. All that stuff I offered you, somebody said they won't do this. And I said, you know, thank God. And they said, oh, hallelujah, I say, hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was able to tie that and get that to them. <laughs> but that next, that next word, amen, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Say it with me, my heart. My heart. I understand how important your heart is. Come on. Yeah. I said, how many understand how important yeah. your heart is? Yeah. Dr. Lou, my heart surgeon, told me, said, Reverend, I took your heart out of your chest. I held it in my hand. I'm thinking, is that why it's so sore? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He told me, yeah. but you know, I told my wife, he didn't know it, but he had a heart that was filled with Jesus. Oh, it was yeah. filled with yeah. God. Yeah. It was filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. It was filled with the word of the living God. Yeah. Because your heart's got a brain in it, church. Uh, your heart's got a brain, not just your brain up here, but your heart has a brain in it. Yeah. And that's why when they put a heart in people, they start understanding and see things of other people that they didn't know a thing about. But certain information begins. Why? Because the heart's got a brain in it. Somebody give God yeah. glory. And God's saying, I don't want your heart to be troubled. If he's saying you don't want your heart to be troubled, he don't want your mind to be disturbed right. either. That's your right. mind. So all these things that come to you, like what Peter said, casting all your cares on the Lord, take that that's trying to get in your mind, take that that's trying to get in your heart, and you take it over there, according to Peter, First Peter chapter 5, verse number 6 and 7, and you take it and you give it to God. Uh -huh. I said, you take it and you give it to uh -huh. God. Your yeah. heart, your mind uh, does not have to be in trouble. My wife comes to me and says, well, what are we going to do? Uh, and I look at them and say, look, I'm standing on the word. Don't you wear it. Everything's going to be all right. Yeah. It may look like a storm over here. It may look like a battlefield over there. But I want you to know that we are surrounded. The Bible says the uh -huh. devil goes around us uh, like a roaring yeah. lion. Uh -huh. You say, why can't he get closer? Read Job. Job uh -huh. said if he gets in my thirty days, you got a head, a head to walk, yeah. a head to yeah. angels. Yeah. You go to David. Uh, in Psalms uh, 37, uh, it says that the angel of the Lord uh, intends to around your life. Uh, yeah. He yeah. will keep you. He will protect you. He'll guide you. He will direct you. He will bless you. Yeah. Come on, yeah. man. Amen. Now all you have to do is take one word out. Not. Not. How many of you love tie knots? Nobody? You just take that word out of there and it says, let your heart be troubled. Uh -huh. See, that's what the devil wants to do. The devil wants to cause your heart to be troubled. The devil wants you, cause your mind to be troubled. He wants you to be worrying about your finances. But 
I'm here to tell you, if you pay your tithes and you give your offerings, God is obligated yes. to bless you. Yes. Now, you don't have to do that at all. You come to this church the day you die and not give one dollar because Jesus paid it in full. Yes. All the money in the world can't get you into heaven, but it'll keep you from being financially blessed. That's yeah. right. Amen. That's right. Let not your heart be drove. Just take that one word out of there. We go back to that first word, let. All you have to do is a trouble in your heart. Yeah. Come on. That's all you have to do is let those things that are worrying you. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, you didn't take them big off. That's all you have to do is just go let them. You can let the people around you pull you down. Mm -hmm. You can let all these different things happen to you. That's if you want to. Come on. For me, that's not true. I had a man talking about a, a man that I happened to like. I even liked the guy that was doing the talking. But I had to say, so why don't you shut up? I am to like that guy. Come on. If you can't talk about him, then go to another church. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. You understand what I'm saying? You can let him go on. You can sit there and fill your ears with it. Or you can say, I've had enough. Yeah. Come, on. come on. Come on. You can let all these problems and difficulties weigh you down. Or you can let the glory. You can let the anointing. You can let the blessing, yeah. you can let the word of God, yeah. you can let the truth, you can let the I am that I am, you can let the way maker, the promise keeper, you can let the one that is the alpha and the omega, you can let the one that's the beginning again, you can let the one who illuminates this world, you can let the king of kings and the lord of lords, the prince of peace, the lily of the valley, the bright morning star, you can let the one who stands at the right hand of the Lord. Nothing is problem. Nothing is a problem with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All depends on what you let in and what you don't want. Say what I don't want. If you don't want me ever come here preaching, don't ever have to write me again. I heard one man say, "Guys, you don't shout." Mm -hmm. He wasn't letting anything that they did bother him. Oh, man, but I can tell you, you can bring the fire down by prayer. You can bring the fire down by prayer. You see, he says, let not your heart, and it's real. This is really real. And your heart is connected to your brain. And your heart and your mind are connected to this. Be very careful what's coming out of this. Even when I knew I was not wrong, I still said to my wife, honey, I'm so sorry. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I want to have peace. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You see, these things are all connected. Everything that we say or we do is all connected. In the midst of this turbulent, trying time that we're living in. And I, I, I'm so thrilled to tell you that COVID-19 has been around for decades. This yes, amen. Been right. Right. Decades, right. decades of I just want you to know that we got a God that's been taking care of the problem and a God yeah. that takes care of problems. Yeah. Don't you pet the Don't, don't, you, don't you dare put those down that they're scared to death of us. They're being healed. You pray for them to be that encouragement right. and strength to them and help them. Uh, and yeah. don't belittle them because they got them. Come you on. stand with them and walk with them until they walk out of that shadow into the shadow of the good things yeah. that God has in store for good things of God. Come on. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. Do I have any believers? Do I have any believers? Amen. The trouble is I have to ask people, what do you believe? Mm -hmm. And who do you believe in? Yes. What do you believe in who you believe in? Uh -huh. And I'm not here to put them down for whatever they believe. But I'm here to tell you that I have personally seen people dead. And I, I had a nurse tell me that my wife was 100% dead. Dead. She said, it's over, Pastor, for your wife. But 
I had a family in a church that was praying. And I'm telling you, they prayed. We prayed. My wife shared later that she had ascended up into the corner of that church. And uh, she seemingly stopped there. She looked back down and she said, I said, God, I can see my children. They're crying. I need to be with my children. And God heard her request. What he's saying, my God can hear your request. Yes. Even when the world says yes. you're dead, you're still alive. In God, God hears your request. When you pray, so don't you dare give up on what you're asking. She is with me today. Yes, I love you. And I didn't try to kill her, folks. <laughs> Let's just get that straight. I did not. I did not. <laughs> oh, my. See, it's really important to understand what you actually believe. See, yeah. I act on what I believe. I say it with me. I act on what I believe. I, act on what I, believe. I believe my dad said, whatever you do, give your very best. Right. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you do, give your very best. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was good. My dad said, ain't good enough, son. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, Dad, you got to be kidding me. But he was a Professionist. Uh -huh. And we serve a God that is a professionist, but yes. yet he is so loving, yes. so kind. Yes. He walks with us and talks with us. Yes. And he yes. helps us and aids us. What's he doing? Yes. He is a perfectionist, perfecting your life in the midst of everything that's coming your way. He's perfecting you to be the best that you can possibly find. Because one of these days, you're going to stand in his courtroom and you're going to hear the millions as they praise and they sing glory to God. Who took all of my sight? I gotta figure out how to make this thing stay on longer. Is that not right? You believe yes. in God. Do you understand that means Jesus knew that he was talking to God believers? Yeah. Do you understand? He was talking to God believers. Yeah. Yeah. And I figure if I asked every one of you, even if you didn't believe, you say, I'm a God believer. Yeah. And if you told that lie, oh my, you are so in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in trouble. Because all lives end up where? Do you understand a lie as small as a little white, triple dwarf white lie will get you to hell? Yeah. The devil is not an idiot. He, he just wants you to tell a simple little lie. So when I tell something, I said, I hope you know I'm Jesus. That doesn't mean anything. You know that, right? Come on, come on. Because, see, I know. I just want you to understand there is God believers. There is God believers. God believers who do not truly read the word, that do not truly pray, that do not truly try to be a witness. Come but on. they're God believers. They're Christ believers. Yeah. But they're truly not doing all that they can do. I, I walked into place one day, and I'm a God believer. And the other part of it says Jesus is believing me. Do, do I have any Jesus believers? Come and on. I'm walking in this place, and I'm walking by this person, and the Spirit of God didn't say it to me, but man, the impression to uh, it came on me so heavy I stopped and said ma'am do you mind if I pray for you because I believe that my God was talking to me to pray for her and so I prayed for her she looked at me and she said you have no idea how bad I needed that word that I needed that prayer yeah. oh I because I am a God the Father I am a God the Son yeah, I am a God the Holy Ghost yeah. believer and he knows yeah. it his sons and his daughter It's so important to know what you believe and who you believe in. But to truly be a believer, that takes it to another level. Say it with me. To truly be a true believer, that will take it to another level. Sometimes people ask me, what are you going to do? There's a song. It just comes to my brain. It says, what are you going to do? I call on Jesus, and Jesus always comes to my rescue. You believe in God, believe also in me. That is so powerful to me. 
But when you take one word out of a sentence, it changes what it means. When you meditate on one word, you get a deeper depth of understanding of what it's actually saying. When you meditate on it, when you get out a dictionary and you begin to look at its deepest of detail, so my, all of a sudden, something begins to happen because now you're getting a bigger picture of the grace and the mercy and the power of a God that wants to bless you and aid you and help you and walk with you and, and help you through those struggles and battles. Uh, when you start uh, looking to what God has to reveal in his word, you'll find his truth will always prevail and you'll find yourself being stronger than you thought possible. Yeah. You'll find the strength that you need in the midst of what you're going through. Yes, Did, you yes. the word? Did you understand the word through? Come on, he's not stopping. Sit with me. Going through. Going through. Sit with me. Going through. Going through. You are going to go through. I like what David said. Yea, though I walk through. Sit with me. Yea, though I walk through. Sometimes, sister, it ain't about walking. It's about one night I was in place, you gotta understand this, and I go through a place where the people are a lot darker than I was, and I was on the obvious side. And I, I you know what I'm crazy, you know what I'm saying? But when I had to go back through the night, it was dark. It wasn't about walking. When you could hear the chains and you knew they had bottles broken and they were chasing you. I mean to tell you, I was not walking. I was a run. You say, what are you talking about? I got a God that sees you in the midst of what you're going through. And sometimes God's not walking. He's running to get to you. One night, I tell you, that night, I tell you, that I was not running, honey. And you know what I did, sister? The closest house I saw, it didn't matter who lived in that house, uh, but I found that the door was locked. Uh, you know what I did, sister? I did the thing if I get to knock and it shall be open. I, I wasn't even a Christian, uh, but I was a knocking, but I was knocking like this. Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Oh, wow. And it scared those guys for a second. I was back running again. <laughs> Say, where were you running? I didn't know it, but I was running to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Well, I'm going to stop, okay? I'm getting old. But I really hope you enjoyed the word that God gave me for you. Yes, hallelujah. For you. Remember this. In God's law, you're in the shadow of good things to come. Now, I'm just going to ask a simple question. Is everybody here saved? Yes. They're all saved. Amen. Would one of you just, you know, kind of backslide for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother, you want to see somebody get saved, right? <laughs> That's probably why God didn't give me a message for people that were lost. I was praying one day. And I'm t- I tell you, I prayed, I cast out. I mean, I believe in miracles and healings, and I see some of the greatest things you cannot imagine. I see some of the greatest things. I went to the church, man. I had fasted, I had prayed, and I mean to tell you, I got up behind that pulpit, and I was ready. You know what God said to me? Nobody's sick tonight. I said, What do you say, God? He said, <laughs> Nobody's sick. You want to learn from that? Quit praying. Uh-huh. My word. Jesus said, not my will, but your will. That's that's what I learned from that. That day to this, I seek the will of God. And God gave me this message for you. And you do not have to let anything in your life, you don't have to do it. You can let God's blessings in. And when the devil comes, say, that's a blessing here, devil. Sit. Now get out. Because he will come to you. Amen. All right, Pastor, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thank you for allowing me to come. When he asked if one of you backslide real quick for a minute, I looked at Becky and I looked at my father-in-law and I thought, which one's going to be first? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they're, they're helpful people, I'm telling you. <laughs> and when it, when it comes to helping a pastor, they'll help a pastor in a heartbeat. Glory to God. Isn't God good? Did you enjoy that word? Didn't you enjoy that word brought to us this evening? Amen. I'm going to, uh, I, I don't, I, I want to receive an offering if Brother John's ready, if you'll come. We're going to receive this offering, and then, uh, then we're just going to have a time, just a short time of prayer around here, well, however long you want to pray. I like having a little altar time before service is over. Amen. Uh, let's pray over this offering. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the word. Lord, we ask you to bless this offering. Increase it, Lord Jesus. Multiply it, Lord. And Heavenly Father, bless those that have given, Lord Jesus, 30, 60, and 100 fold. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Brother John, go ahead and receive that offering. Okay, go get Elsa. Uh, the Children's Hospital called uh, my daughter, and the, the results came back, and it's children, it's juvenile arthritis in her knees. And so we're going to have her come out here, and we're going to pray for her. Uh, I know God. I know a God. Yeah, you know, God doesn't, God, you know, the word tells us when the children came to Jesus and the disciples said, now get them out of here. And he said, suffer the little children to come unto me, so such as the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to tell you something. I know this little girl. I know her heart. She loves Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something. I know God can heal. Amen. I'm going to ask some of you folks if you'll come up and gather around them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 You know, we can worry, and we can cry, and we can fret about what the doctor says. Or we can rejoice, we can celebrate, and we can praise what God said. God said that he will heal. God said, by his stripes, we are, and there's a scripture that says we were, so either way, there's a healing. We either are or we were. It doesn't say we're going to be. It says we are or we were. Either way, we're healed. Elsa has such a heart for God. You know her, she, my wife tells me, she goes, I'm, I'm worried about her. Because when she gets older, she's such a trusting person. But you know what? She's got such a love for God. And she sings with us. And she, she, she prays with us. 
Uh, her and her sister and her brother, they'll find a place to pray before church. God, this does not go unnoticed to God. I realize that works don't get us into heaven. But I do realize that when we are doing what God has called us to do and we are honoring him, he does look down and smile upon that. And he honors that. Amen? So I believe her knees are going to be fine. We don't have to worry about arthritis. Well, she don't have to worry about arthritis. At my age, I'm getting to worry about arthritis. But that's a whole other story. That's my own fault because I abuse my body. But she doesn't have to worry about arthritis. I got up the other morning, and I'm grabbing my finger. My wife says, what's wrong? I said, I think somebody's grabbing a needle from here to my knuckle. It's just killing me. And I'm, I'm rubbing it and pulling on it and walking around shaking it. And, and eventually it quit hurting. And now it's just stiff. But that's okay. That's because I abused my body. I, I brought this on myself. This wasn't something that just happened. You know, amen? So we know that God's going to heal. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, I was going to have a time of prayer, but I think we just did. I think we all came in one mind and one accord. Amen? Honda, yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm just glad he didn't say one mind and one Prius. <laughs> oh, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> oh, you don't have to drive a Prius anymore? Uh, well, my father-in-law found out that you can't all get in a Versa, that's for sure. Because <laughs> he tried to put another car in there with him and it didn't fit. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Mm. I just, I hate to dismiss and go away from God's family.